I'm just going to talk about what's really going on, right? And I don't want people to get jumpy about what's really going on. It's what's really going on about me. What's going? What am I going through? You know, what can I share? What can I share? Um, as you know, I'm a I'm a two kingdom person. What do I mean by that? I mean when I when I look at things, I try and relate as often as I can and bring up inside myself to see what's happening in the other kingdom based on the teachings that I've learned from the prophet, Bible, etc., and how they interact and how they work when different things happen, right? We understand we're like, we're in a spectrum, right? We have this small spectrum with our ears and our eyes, and we can understand in this world. And we know there's a spectrum beyond that with gamma rays and x-rays and all sorts of things that are around us that can affect us. And way beyond that is the angelic in the heavens in that realm, right? But we know that the real world is that realm that this body, this mind, these senses could never, ever comprehend. And we as angelic bodies and stuck inside these clavin images, trying to express and deal with the other kingdom. So I'm constantly trying to tie that together. So here I am, and I'm desperately in need in this kingdom, right? To us and these senses and these bodies of something that we believe couldn't be real because we're children of light and we're going to deal in the other realm. But we, we're trying to make it happen here. We're trying to get it done. Can anyone relate to that? Anybody? And I'm sure you can. Every one of us can relate to that. You know, people are judging you, right? Oh, look at him. Look at her. Lord must be punishing. Yeah. I wonder what kind of sin they've committed to be so much trouble to befall them. You name it. It's happened. It's happened to you. It's happening to me. It's happening to people I love around me. All around us, all the time. Trying to take what you own. Trying to take your resources. Trying to take your joy. Trying to take all sorts of things. Being presented to us by darkness, to these senses. If we would only agree with it, then they can follow through and steal it from us. See, people coming up to you, you can relate to this and say, yep, yep, you know, telling me about me and, and using God's name. We've been through that. We've been through that within the believers. We've been through that in people that don't believe, you know. But as soon as I accept that, as soon as I get emotional about that, as soon as I allow that in my heart, I've defiled through their temptation, through me being tempted. And now my mind is all of a sudden, what's it going to do? It's going to play with what I let in my heart, these bad things that they said and did to me. And now I'm all stirred up and all over the place. So while this world seems like it's coming down on top of me, and you, maybe in your case, right? But this is about me. And it's just squeezing every which way. There's nothing left. There's no room. And just when you think it's over, you're going to push through a little bit, and God gives you a little more grace, a week, a month, this, that. And it just keeps squeezing and squeezing. Health, finances, like you name it. You name it. Everything. So I said, okay, this is about a year ago. I'm going back about a year. So I go through a thorn in the flesh. And I go through purpose of temptation. I said, okay. Because God was showing me something about intercession. And I was, I was trying to intercede. But he, basically, for the truth of me being truthful with myself, I said, okay, I got to go back. And I, I, you know, I miss some. I miss some. Thorn in the flesh. Which basically is, and, and, and someone can explain this way better, but I'm trying to jam it in a sentence. It's basically, God's going to have you go through things in your life to help you cross over into an acceptable spiritual capacity at that time. So he does things in the natural in your life who squeeze you because he wants you to do his will. Thorn in my flesh. But then there's also purpose of temptation. Oh, purpose of temptation. And that's more so or basically God allowing darkness as per their job when we stand up on his word to come in and tempt us See if we can prove God, right? Can we work in our spiritual capacity? 
they get to do that. Oh, attack from darkness that can happen. So those are kind of the three basic things. So I went through that, trying to organize what's happening when, what's happening when, quit being so emotional, so judgmental about it, so expressing so much about it, just trusting God in it. Starting to get that back under control. Starting to get that back under control. So, okay, so intercession comes up from the Father. Okay, let's let's take a look at this, Father. Let's let's get this out of the way. Let's let's get this. And here goes the story, eh? Here goes the story. So I make a list, like Prophet did. He says that's what he did. People to pray and intercede for. So I got a list. I got, I got I got people in ministry to support ministry. I got I got friends and family. I got I got you know all sorts of just these lists. I have a whiteboard over here. It's, whiteboard in my prayer room and try and go through that right okay that's great so we want to have our prayers heard so i'm like yeah i want to have my prayers heard so i gotta forgive so i gotta forgive so yeah i forgive father i forgive prayers can be heard for anyone to get true forgiveness selfishness must be cleansed out so god i got it I'm not a selfish guy. I try to help everyone. I try and do everything for the family. I try and put everyone first. I'm like, okay, I guess there's some selfishness. I'm gonna have to dig this out. Great. <laughs> the flesh. That was the flesh. Great. So for anyone to get into true forgiveness, you gotta cleanse that out. So the heart felt humility and humbleness had to be developed. Now a heartfelt opening up your heart. So that final cake in that, in that, and they're on that heart, that sin that you've held onto can be developed out. Now, humility is a modest or low view of importance. And then selfishness, that has nothing to do with humility. And humble, humble is a thought or action of oneself less important than others. Less important than others, putting other people first. And, and selfishness has nothing to do with that. Now, as I talk about those, I'm like, wow, it sounds like you're talking about fruit of the spirit in action. Fruit of the spirit is without self. It's not self first. And the people that know me, I, I enjoy the fruit of the spirit. I've enjoyed learning about it, talking about it, preaching about it. And I'm kind of the fruit guy, right? So here I am now learning more in a deeper view about getting that selfishness out. So the fruit can actually truly more so be produced and truly remain. So I'm entering into this development process about true humbleness and humility. And eventually, I'm really required to truly understand that judging, right? I got to be cleaning out my heart and learn that sin is still cake there. And I'm listening to the justification of the pride of my flesh, judging incorrectly. Right? I'm not I'm not judging by the word correctly. So I'm trying to use the word, but I'm doing it incorrectly. I'm doing it with the cake that's in my heart by adding it to the situation. And I'm defiling myself in some type of sin, whatever is there. Pick whatever one you wish. And the basic process that the prophet describes. And it seems so simple when he talks about it and it's on paper. And, and you write it out. It's just, yeah, just got to do this all the time. Just got to chug, 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 chug and get it done. So I know the system. I know how it works. I preached it. I get it. I have the diagrams. I have the scriptures. I got a book. I have extensive studies of the prophet's material. So I'm like, okay, I got to go back through the, 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 this war in the mind. I go through that. And then, I, and then I, I reach back over into familiar spirits and demonology and casting out of devils. But real quick, for, for those that haven't gone through all of these titles and materials from the prophet and the foundation that we came from, who, who brought us up, our mentor, that's what I'm referring to. Okay, So I'm sorry if you, if you don't know these titles of these, of these teachings, but this is, I guess, me talking to people that have been through this. Okay, So just enjoy if you get lost in that. So familiar spirits, as we know, we're going to get rid of them. They're going to come back. We know about demonology. We know about casting out of devils. They're going to come and attack our mind. They're going to make suggestions, which are basically thoughts or feelings. We're going to entertain it. It gets in our heart. 
Now, you know, we got to get rid of it. Seven more are going to come back. We're going to have a harder time. We've got to be able to prove to the Father to get out of this sin so that we can get that blessing. So that means we're going to have to go through getting rid of jealousy. We're going to have to go get rid of, of, of uh, unforgiveness and doubt and unbelief and past pain and all those things. So I go through all of that and I remind myself when I'm running tickety-boo, getting it going, getting it going. Then I got to remember the fruit, the fruit being unconnected. So every time that it happens, I'm unconnected. So I could be walking around all day and because I sinned, I'm not connected to the son, to the father. Right. So then I'm praying, I'm doing things, but can he hear me? No, because I'm in sin. I'm not repented. I haven't gone through and reconnected. And then how am I having any access to the Father? Or can he hear me? And here I am sitting around waiting and wanting for these miracles and these things to happen, and I'm not connected. <laughs> I'm not connected. So I got to be connected. So then it's a repent, repent, repent through the day, repent through everything, repent for everything, repent for everything. People say, talking about it, man, that's a lot of work. That's that's too much. That's too much. I don't know if God wants us, you know, come on, come on, let's be serious. All this stuff you just blurted out, man, we got to do that. No way. No way. Yeah. Well. Our culture is not the world's culture. Absolutely everything that we have been taught through every single screen, computer, social media, everything is backwards. It's wrong. English language is a lie. It's here we are. We're trying to do it with our minds. We can't do nothing with our minds. It's completely the spirit. It's completely over in the spirit world. In the day that we're in, in this time, almost everything is a lie that's presented to us from darkness, from darkness. So I'm going over and I'm trying to do really good in this interceding thing. I'm going through the list. I'm remembering all of these CDs and going through them and hammering it out. And then I'm remembering when you're interceding, the feeling that you get, thought or feeling in your body, it's, it's not for you, okay? It's about them. Don't take that on because you could be interceding and then you could be going around and say, oh, I'm depressed. Well, no, you're interceding for someone else. Oh, I'm sore. Oh, my knee's bad. My knee's, no, no. It's their knee. It's their depression. You're standing the gap. Okay. Oh, man, that's, man, but I'm so used to agreeing with darkness about me having a problem. I got it. I'm getting it. Learning to open up heart. The prophet talks about, and in some of the meetings and the notes that we had when we were with him in, in private, the leadership and the teachers, he talked about learning. You must learn to open up your heart, talking about prayer and intercession. And he also talks about asking God to show you. But then I also have to remember, show me, but it's not for me. It's for someone else when interceding. Don't take it on. So I had that to the list was feeling good, this intercession, this list, what was happening and doing it. Then it started not to feel good. Then it started to be a bit of trouble. Then it was just, it was frustrating. So just think that there. I was wondering, why is it so frustrating? You know, here I am, we're fighting in the spirit world. You know, we're playing around in this flesh world. You know, things, things were lost in my heart. I was starting to Things were, 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 were coming up inside of me, not while I was interceding, but afterwards when I was done. And I'm like, no, it's, it's not my feeling. It's not this. It's not that. And what I realized is God was trying to show me there's a deeper forgiveness for things that you need to understand because they're popping up in my mind later, trying to prevent me from wanting to intercede for other people. And then talking about them. So I had to fight a portion of my heart to get that clarity. I wanted to have the access to God. And I'm trying to get the access to God and interceding for other people, for them, and so that I can have things that have clarity in my life because it's coming down so hard, it's making me move flesh. So I realized I must forget, forgive. So things popped up about people in my mind, right? 
you know, but that, but that's them, not me. I didn't do that, right? Uh, so I had to break it in the spirit. I had to forgive people for what they are doing to me or did to me. You know, that part was easier. Okay, let me go and clean it out. I forgive them. I forgive them. Let it all go. It comes up. I forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. All right. That's the easy part. Now, I want you to go down, put down your pride, and reach out and go to people and ask them for forgiveness. What I've done, known, didn't know, don't even know if there is anything you did or things that you did do. I'm like, whoa, 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 God. No, no, no. I forgave everybody. He goes, no. No matter what the real deal is, you got to ask people to forgive you. Just move this over here. Okay. So I'm going through that. And so I communicated to people about forgiving me or asking them to forgive me. Some people communicated back. Some people didn't. Some people asked me if I could forgive them. But what happened was something broke in the spirit. There's no perfect way to go about this. I did the best I could. And it, something broke in the spirit because I wanted to be a blessing and I wanted to be blessed. So then I learned, of course, as you know, to forgive immediately going forward so the destroyer can't come in and enter. To forgive immediately so that I can ask the Father and he will hear me. And then I will know what to do next. Ask, seek, and knock. And always, did I did I really forgive? No, let's. I'm not talking about it anymore. No, or you know, it's done. So I've I've went through a process of cleaning that up in my mind and in my heart. Not perfect, but a lot better. And breaking that spiritual bondage with other people by going to them or initiating conversation if they chose to enjoy or engage. So then it gets, goes over, now that that's kind of broken the other side, so something else comes in. So I went through Satan's Deception Justifies Believers, Slander, and Wickedness CD series. So, again, pray and intercede for your enemies, those that come against you. Stack coals against them. Ask God to bless them. What? Oh, yeah. Do it properly. God will move them and their attitude away from you. But you got to know that you know and get all these other things in order so you can do this properly and not hang on to the vestiges of unforgiveness or whatever so it really doesn't happen. Prophet talks about it in his series where a guy was coming against him when he was a boiler maker and, and doing a bit of preaching. And so he fasted and prayed for three days for this person, right? And then that person, something, the yoke was broken on the other side, and then that person wanted to be his friend, right? Came up and apologized to him for being a prick, right? Didn't know why he didn't like him, but so I'm like, okay, yes. So I went through that CD series and added it. To it's like a thorn in the flesh. I got representation. I got casting out of demons, demonology down, going through them, going through the main principles of them all, fruit of the spirit, right? I'm, I'm understanding how to speak into the supernatural. And then resent and bitterness comes up because we had put those two CD series up on the Ephraim. So unforgiveness, the pain, the past main, the judgment, and the resentment. Putting my mind or feelings before the spirit's principles. The, the flesh, the world uh, first, this, the, 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 the mind, right, can't even comprehend, but it wants to jump in. You know, your mouth just keeps talking these things, sinning. You don't want to sin, but you just, you sin. And, like you, and you just, you got to justify it. Instead of turning around and saying, well, that's in my heart, write it down. I got to tear that out about that person. I don't know where that came from, that seed. But see, the spiritual rules are first, and they're the only, only, only things that matter. See, God is speaking, speaking God's holy word. There's a lie, right? And it's the only thing to trust. will have no effect, right, if you're doing this and hanging on to the darkness in your heart and trying to cross over into the spirit world with that bitterness, forgiveness, and past pain, and you're clinging on to it. 
And here you are, you're speaking and you're interceding and you're fasting and you're praying and you're turning around and it's bitterness and it's unforgiveness and it's past pain and it's judgment. God said this when he didn't say it and stuff like that. And where's the intercession getting done? Uh, we, get, we get lucky, we get through, right? But where is it? Still hanging on to this world, hardly. I mean, resentment and bitterness. I'm like, I'm not a resentful person. I'm not a bitter person. And all of a sudden, people come up to me. Oh, you're resentful of this. You're resentful of that. You did this. You did that. I'm like, where is this coming from? I don't care. I forget. I got no rear view. It doesn't matter. Let's move forward. All of a sudden, all this stuff started coming out. I'm like, wow. Resentment and bitterness. You know, I don't care about the other people. The words are speaking to me. Then I realized sometimes I was. Sometimes I cared. I should have just ignored what they were saying and just, hey, you know what, brother? Let's just move on. Let's just pray. Let's just, let's just you know, agree on something different. But no, I, I had to engage a little bit, even the littlest bit. So here I am making it real, darkness, using thoughts or other people to come to me, agreeing with them slightly, not casting it down correctly. And then all of a sudden, it has life and a foothold in and around my life and my business and my family, and it has a right to be here to attack. Man, you're talking about even the crumbs out of my heart? The crumbs? Man, I gotta get the crumbs out. I just want it to stop. I'm trying to produce fruit of the Spirit. I'm like, all right, I gotta get away. I gotta get everyone away. I don't wanna hear them talking to me, thinking they're right, talking about me. <laughs> I don't want to hear myself talking to them about them or other people. I just need space. Give me some space. I gotta breathe. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. You know, I realize I can't even speak about it a little bit, not even when I can't give it life. Otherwise, you truly haven't forgiven or gotten the bitterness out or whatever it is. I don't want to hear them talk to me about it because I'm still trying to get down to these crumbs. And I don't want to deal with that where I thought I could before. So it's got to stop. And it became much better having some space, being able to breathe, being able to start to put it back together with everything else and start to go forward. I had to get away for months at a time. I had to think with my heart. So I started to remain connected more often and longer through the day. I started to speak the thoughts better. The fact that I, I had to stay away from other people for months and from myself, I had to overcome that, 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 that some things that other people didn't understand that I was trying to understand. You know, how to handle this now. God, please let me know I'm not like them. Why am I like them? Oh, no, no, they're coming at me. They're coming at me. They're justified by you. They're just pointing their finger. Lord God, they can't just shut their mouth. And then it hit me. God, I, I know you're showing me this, but man, I'm just like them. I'm no different than them. I'm not. I can't point the finger. I can't point the finger. Who might point the finger at them? You know, I know it's like, no, they can't be doing that, that your brother or sister, but you still got to go through the process of denying what they're trying to present to you in this world by reaching over in the spiritual world to pull something else back so that doesn't happen anymore. Let it be healing or let it be whatever it is. So here I am trying to truly work at intercession, understanding I'm as guilty as anyone else. I'm not pointing the finger anymore. i understanding more about the, the, the things that I had to get out and let go, even if when I re-enter the whole process, that that's still going to be coming at me. But at least I understand the depth of those crumbs better. So I can just let it slide. Let it go. Just go right through those waters and it's okay. I'm not going to hang on to it. It doesn't hurt my flesh anymore. So what I realized is I wasn't asking correctly with intercession. I was working at it, but I was asking the Father wrong. 
I was asking the father, and I got to ask correctly. See, we don't have because we don't ask correctly. We ask amiss, right? We don't ask, we ask amiss. So if I'm not connected because of sin, I'm asking wrong. God can't hear me. All he hears is mumble jumble. It's like you called him. He's like, hello. And it's like every word can. It hangs up. Terrible joke. Something like that. My mind can relate to that. Say, oh, yeah, I hate when that happens. Man, forget it. It's frustrating. If I have unforgiveness, I ask wrong. If I have judgment, I ask wrong. If I have bitterness, I ask wrong. Even if it's the smallest, tiniest thing, and you've got 99% of it out, you still got to go after that other one because you can be disconnected. Now, I said to myself, I said, wait a minute, I've been keeping the festivals of New Moon and Shabbat for about 25 years. I've been studying the prophet's material for almost 20 years. I sat under him. I was developed by him. I had access to him in a relationship. I'm like, are you kidding me, God? We're down after all this time, and we're down to this? And you're making the world cave in on top of me, pushing me through that form? Getting purpose of temptation? Getting attacked from every direction? Oh, I guess. Is it graduation? Trying to push me through? What do I got to know? Kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm that dense? Can anybody relate? Can you? Can you relate? In any way. See, story, I think it's about Kenneth Hagin, and it relates to this. 15 years he was in the ministry. Finally got to the point where, you know, he, he kind of hear from God a little bit better. And, you know, and God's like, hey, I got your first job. And I said, God, what do you mean? I've been in this for 15 years. God's like, no, I got your first job, then the second job. He's like, what do you mean? He goes, well, all that other stuff you did for 15 years, that's not what I was asking you to do. What a crazy story from a man like that, talk like that. I can relate to that. Put my pride down and say, oh, I can relate to that. I can be humble. Yeah. Yeah. And so can you. See, I don't have because I asked wrong. Yes, there's more into this with actions and the systems about how we ask, right, and how we're able to be heard by the Father, but we're asking amiss. we got to get it all tickety-boo in the right order all the time, and that's our culture. That's who we are. That's who we are in the other kingdom. It's not what we're presented over here. So we're not going to engage in this kingdom, in this world, and what's happening. We're going to deny it, and we're going to pull things from intercession, speaking from the other kingdom over here, and that's what the Father is really doing, but we got to get it all lined up. And we got to do it together. No big shots. No little shots. Just doing it. See, judging. No man or woman is to judge another person. Only unto the word of God. The, the, see, the body, including ministry, the body, everybody, has taken this topic and they have justified imaginations from eons of time until today. And I'm sure it will in the future. You know, when we say words to somebody and we quote the word and we're kind of saying you're sinning right that's that's not how you implement the knowledge of what's going on right we're trying to take the scripture with our mind and, and jump on them and not adding fruit into it doesn't help where we say you know you're going through this and you're going through that and i feel i just feel this is what god is saying <laughs> yeah just your mind just your mind influenced by darkness, using God, blaming it on God, right? And the murmuring, talking to other people and this and that. I mean, when you go back in the story with Moses and the judging and murmuring that was going on, you know, and the people were getting bitten by snakes, and the ones that were dying were the ones that were judging and murmuring, just them. So there was this bronze snake. God said, okay, Moses, make a bronze snake, put it on your staff. And then each of them got bit. They just come up and they repent to that staff and that snake. They came up and they repented and they were healed. So what was that about? It's God saying, look, they, they didn't have the Torah and all that yet and, and everything and known for generations. They're in the wilderness. But they, what they had is they had the knowledge of creation. They're saying the serpent's come. He's got in your imagination. He, he's trying to take you over. 
you repent for what you did taking on that imagination from that serpent and speaking that judgment and murmuring, and you get to live. And they knew back then about the mind and the murmuring and, the, and, and what is happening all the way back to Adam and Eve in the garden. And today, it just seems like it's so far from us. Because snakes aren't biting us and we're dying all the time or lightning's not hitting beside us enough. You know, so many times, so many times we get this so out of whack trying to bring the flesh in. So I go through the series now, speaking into the supernatural and faith. Speaking into the supernatural and faith. And we put those two, they're up on, on, on we have from teachings from the prophet, his material. So I go through those. And, and as we go th through that, I'm, I'm going through what we're going through here, and the world is squeezing tighter and tighter on me, and, and just being so tight in every which way. You know, thank God my wife has never come against the process or against God, and kids are good, but everything else is just up, sea turtles. So we going through that, and, I, and I'm going around, and I'm speaking to the supernatural. I'm telling Satan how to hog eat the cabbage. I'm commanding them how to do things. I'm speaking to things that aren't here as though they're here, and I'm doing it every day and hours a day and whatever going at it. And I realized, how can I have any effect with this if there's a little judging, a little murmuring, a little bettermanship, a little bit of whatever, jealousy, past pain coming out of my mouth from my heart? Is it going to have that effect in the other world? Are you going to be able to do that? What needs to be done? So we learned not to judge by feelings and familiar spirits, right? 33% we can say, okay, it's your mind. 33% of the time, it's from God. 33% of the time, it's from darkness. It's not always like that, but use a baseline for the teaching and argument's sake. So that comes in at you. So that means... If you accept it 33% of the time, you know, two times you're wrong, 66%. So that means we should be repenting and apologizing and asking forgiveness 60% of the time. But look, we study, we do a little better, right? So we're going to say we didn't fail 66% of the time, we, we failed 50. No, that's not good enough. Okay. How about, how about we only fail 25%? Can we? 20%? Okay, we're going to settle on 20%. That means 20% of the time, whoever you are, Whoever we are in this process, we're going through the same thing. Should we be repenting and apologizing to each other a whole lot more? I mean, to God, of course, that's an easy one. But look, to communicate with somebody else about it. What you're doing to them, the murder in the spirit, for them and their family, for the body, knows what's going on. Can we at least agree? That we should be doing a lot more of that? A whole lot more of that? Speak with the fruit of the Spirit and have it stay effect no matter what. Because you're within that fruit against such there is no law. So as we're going through this process, we're trying to hold this together. Yeah, we're just going to keep pulling that in and staying in the fruit. And if you're doing that, you're making it happen. You're making it happen. Right? The love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, long-suffering. And then I go through the series, How to Increase Your Anointing. So that's up on Rehab from, from teachings from the prophets, prophets material, right? And then all the guys in Ephraim International, they, they, they teach from his material and other things, but they tell you what, that's what you study. He's the, he's the, he's the guy. He's the guy. Spirit of Elijah that day. You, you listen to his material and it comes up and you piece them together. You go back through it, it comes up and then you start piecing them together and you're like, ah, 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 ah. You know, straight from the throne. See, brother and sister, we have to know that, right? We don't talk about others. Once, once we learn to do this, once we learn to open up our heart, once we learn to speak into a situation, into the situation and the result of it, we're not going to speak about the other person anymore. And that sin that's having us, whatever all those sins might be, apply to that person. We're going to speak into the situation. We're going to speak into the person using the holy word of God. 
And we're going to speak into the result that much manifests from the other kingdom over here in their life. Yeshua spoke this way. Incredible going through the words written read in the Bible and how he went about it and how he connected between those worlds and demanded things to happen. Because the demand came from not demanding and natural with the words of demanding. He just, it had to be because he said it had to be because it lined up with the principles. We're to remain with God, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the promises that was made there to them, right? We have those promises. It's not the selfishness. It's not the flesh. It can never get in. God does not feel bad for us the lie from the pit of hell. You got to know that you're clean in your heart. Control that flesh. The mind the anointing can get in and they're going to mess it up with me. So the, we got to make it so the Father's working, the Father's working, the Father's working, the principles are working forward and we're speaking correctly. I'm going to have to keep reminding myself, I want my prayers heard. I want my prayers heard. I want the best for my family and for Ephraim. I'm going to intercede for them. If they're interceding for me and I'm doing it properly and this is correctly, then it's going to have power there. And then they're going to do that for me. Getting rid of all this nonsense and the lies of this realm that we're in. It's not true. If I judged, I'm going to be judged. And then that much more by it. Why am I going to drink the poison and expect a different result? I'm just going to take 10 step backwards to get it in my head and i'm not a judgy guy there's still some there i had to just get rid of all the poison still working on it not saying i got it please please don't don't go that way so why judge why judge why judge just don't judge just don't judge just stop yourself just stop don't do it just how yeshua spoke and how he directed it into situations you know, I just don't want to run my mouth. I just don't want to run my mind. I just want to be so careful in every situation and try and engage in the body without fumbling around everywhere, acting like I got it made, and I don't. Anybody else relate or begin to relate? You know, praying, fasting. Praying and fasting, the foundational things to be able to go in and have status in the other kingdom, to reach over. That's what an intercessor does. The fasting and the prayer, reaching over, reaching over. I can change my future, implementing just God's principles, not the world's, the true way. Not being tricked into believing I'm God's buddy once in a while. He'll wink at me, baloney, from Rose Lane, fantasy bubble, you know, fruit of the spirit, young field, spirit, talker, you know, but going nowhere because my heart isn't lined up because I'm not reaching over properly and pulling back properly. So I hope you're enjoying my story so far about myself and my, you know, just trying to rip things open and go back through it all about being squeezed into nothing so God can just push that through. <clears throat> Ever say, you know, well, say this, I'm anointed of God. Say it. I'm anointed of God. Please say it. And you are. The prophet told us we're anointed of God. Remember, it says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. You are anointed. That's a two-part sentence. Touch not my anointed. Don't touch them. They can't touch you. Only if you let them. Do my prophets no harm? I think that was put in there because those guys got a different job. Same as everyone else and extra. Because they're going to screw up sometimes. Oh, the prophet talked about all his mistakes. He said he was the biggest mistake, made the most mistakes, tried every shortcut. Failed, 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 failed. And then he made it through. The problem is you're going to hurt people when you go through and you fail. But don't come against them. Don't kick at them. Don't talk about them. Don't go after them. 
because you're going to judge and you're going to drink the poison and again, you hurt themselves. Let the prophets deal with the prophets. And the prophets should and better be dealing with the other prophets about keeping this in order and having unity, being seasoned one on to another. That's for them. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I know it can hurt, but don't touch it. Those guys need to get at each other. That's what they're to do. They're to be seasoned. The prophet had angels come to him, and what God had him doing was to be prophesied in his life. We are to come together. We are to restore the pathways of old. We are to come together, Ephraim. Those guys got to get it together, together. Leave it alone. A couple stories about intercession. I'm going to get into intercession. And a couple stories. We've got 20 minutes left, just a little time. The prophet, you know, he could intercede. He could do things. There was, there was a story where the guys were in the back room, and, and the one gentleman told the other guy, he says, yeah, pack up that, and then, uh, I'm going to take it back to the hotel room. And prophet, nope. Or what happened was he started packing up a few things. The other guy wouldn't take it to the car, so the other guy just picked it up and took it to the car. You know, next day, got prophet pulled them both in, said, who did what? And the other guy said, no, I didn't, I didn't touch it. No, I told me to pack it up, but I wouldn't take it out. I'm not taking it out of your house. But the prophet interceded, and God could speak to him. He knew, and he with that situation growing up eh? growing up he came to where we lived and he was he had fasted and he had prayed and it was about a, a, a situation just a life thing right but through his preparation intercession and prayer he knew what to do he came in and he yelled at me now he's this tall right I'm a big man when he came up to me the whole world opened up he became about 20 feet tall Finger came down on me, whole area went black, and lit me up. up. Lit me up. It came back down. And, you know, he scared the hell out of me, literally. But he broke that. You know, there was another time we had met up, and he had been fasting for 30 days. And he was, where we were talking, there was a, a, a bunch of us. And something was going on, and I was just inside my heart. I was like, God, God, I, 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 why do I got to do this and sit through this? I said, Lord, God, do something. Say something. They said about this situation. And it was inside of my heart, a very deep, opened-up heart prayer. And the prophet, a true intercessor, just was off to the side. He didn't hear me. I didn't say it out loud. Just stop. Had a visitation. He left his conversation, came over, said, Matt, come here. Pulled me to the side. And he gave me the answer to what I was talking about. Quietly to God from my heart. Blow me away what a seasoned prophet can do. What they go through, the prayer and the fasting to cross over into that other side and to bring things back. And be available all the time for whatever God wants, not what their mind wants. You know, there was a time the prophet had called my dad. He says, nope, I prayed for Matt. And I, I, it was something like, it was a long, it was long, I wouldn't say it's a day, but he prayed. Fast didn't pray. Pray, 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 pray. He says, no, I broke it. Matt's going to be okay. He's okay now. My dad called me, told me, and I was just like, oh. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then even today, I think about that. Save my life. Save my life. And there's more. I got more here, but I'm not going to get into them. But that intercession and not being selfish and cleaning out your heart, and being able to intercede and cross over, we can all do that. We're all supposed to do that for one another. 
but it's that selfishness getting out, having humility and being humble and knowing all those principles and being okay with all those principles and knowing that that's the only way to do it through those teachings and not what the mind's going to come and bring in. It's not too hard. This is our culture. This is our culture. See, intercession, I'm going to close up here in the next 10 minutes. It's deeper than we've ever known. It moves heaven and earth. God can get things done. You know, we're told to pray at least an hour a day, up in the evening, through the day, and then in all situations. See, when you can get it together, when I can get it together consistently, mm. I'm going putt putt. We control the spirit world, then this world. We believe by doing faith. The principles and the keys. The anointing does the work. The anointing is the anointing. We are to believe. It does the work. God's not a respecter of persons. He cares not about religion. He, he doesn't care about religion, right? Or what you're saying that he says. He cares about people that seek him until he moves. Peace. The peace series talks about that. How a man thinketh, so is he. Your imagination, another great series, tying it in. You have to see yourself whole. It is the key, the key, the key. You don't let anything else come in that is presented by other people, by your mind, or by this world, that is contrary to the word of God, because in the other kingdom, we have it all. We have to see ourselves whole in every situation whole, and we have to speak it and hang on to it and clean ourselves out in the process and become better until the manifestation. However, and along that is, he picks it when he chooses. The key is to see it, then tell it to that person in the situation. Say it has been received. I was going through the intercession series again. Now this is after a year, and, I, and I'm listening after going through all this review. I'm like, oh, that's a key. You have to tell the situation it has received by his stripes, right? It's not just healed by his stripes. You can heal situations, you can stripes. You're healed by it. See, when you intercede for somebody, oh, this is, this is, I got this one. And, and, and if you already know it, may just praise God with me. You are them in the other kingdom. When you intercede, you get yourself into a position correctly. You, you are that other person in the other kingdom. You become that person in the other kingdom. You reach over, you break through the barriers of darkness for them. Because they don't understand, they're believing whatever it is in this world or what's going on or whatever it is. You reach over in the other kingdom and you yank them back the result, the healing of the situation or body or whatever into this kingdom. Your anointing goes and does it because you are here and you're pulling it together. You're believing, you're doing your job. The anointing is out there. I don't know all the work and stuff that they do, but you're having faith. Faith must be produced. You're believing faith, faith, faith is produced. It's like a currency or food or whatever it is on the other side. It has to be there. God's not a respecter of persons, but faith and faithfulness. And those angels, that anointing can go out there and use that faith over there, cash that in and bring that back. You stand the gap. You break the yoke you got to convince darkness that you are the word and apply that word and stick to that word because that's all that they know. Now, they're going to come and try and test you sometimes, right? But you just stand on the word, and then they're going to have to go away. They're going to have to go away. Fasting gives you so much status in the other kingdom on top of prayer. It's like a... a, a just so much more for that anointing to go and get that job done so that you are less attached to this world so that you can react properly in your faith walk in the situation. God can do nothing but according to his word. You have an anointing to be able to move, right? Our faith is action. But you got to ask correctly. 
You got to be in position correctly. You got to be available for God correctly. You got to always be searching over and looking to that other side. But we control it by our believing. We act and we say, we have, we have, like, when, when, when the, the angelic force is doing it, what do we do? We believe. So what do we do? We can, we can stop it by not having faith anymore, being tricked and fooled. We can keep going, keeping, maintaining the faith. We screw up, we have, might have to start over, or we got the I quit button. It isn't much more than that. Our job is the simpler job. The angelic force is doing the fighting. And please remember, when you intercede, you are them. You are them. You cross over. You cross over, pulling that person back. Intercession. The Father, our Jehovah, the Son, is up there. We're connected to him. He's on the right hand of God interceding for us. So it's us to him to access the power of the Father. He's interceding for us. I mean, what an amazing thing that that is. And we're going to go intercede for other people. It's not us. We're doing it, but it's the anointing doing the work. It can happen because we're rightly connected to the Father so we can access the power of the Lord God Almighty for that situation, for our brother and our sister and our families. There's a chain of events in this. There's a chain of events in this, but we have to do it correctly.